look at the championships of 1996 begins in Cumbria with the ladies 10 mile title race promoted by the well-known Barrow Central Wheelers on the popular Levens Bridge course. But an eagerly awaited first title race of the new season was marred before it even began when the great Beryl Burton, having sent her entry off and been put down to start at number three in the field of 79, collapsed and died suddenly whilst out on her bike just six days before. It was a hammer blow to cyclists everywhere and there couldn't have been a single person at this championship who wasn't thinking of her and her many achievements as they realised that rider number three would not be answering the timekeeper's call. Number two, Mid Shropshire's Anne McChesney, destined to clock a modest 25.37, must have had mixed feelings in the knowledge that the greatest female cyclist of all time would not be coming past her with the usual word of encouragement she gave to all her victims. But, as ever, the show must go on, and crew Clarion's Paula Wallet was destined to clock 23.44, just 34 seconds slower than the first rider off, Andal's Anne Wooldridge. This is Hazel Reynolds, the first of a six-strong Liverpool Century squad, and her 25.44 ended up being just enough to get her into their top three. British best all-rounder Anne Plant now on her local course, yet a liker of longer distances than this. Her time was 23-1, good enough to take an early lead, but ultimately only 12th best on the day. Behind her, another of the strong Aundel Velo squad, Fiona Harrison. She failed to dislodge Anne Plant by just eight seconds, but was already putting her team in a very strong position, yet not before a heartbeat was missed here as a foot parted company with a pedal. At number 15, Askern's Katie Allen, daughter of former BBAR Margaret. In 1995, she won her first individual medal with a gutsy third place in the 100. And here we see Mum, due off just five minutes behind her, yelling encouragement. Here we see Katie really putting everything into this shortest of championship efforts. Fastest at the Lindale roundabout turn, she stormed back to clock a personal best 22.25 and take the lead, although she was destined to finish only in fifth place. Two minutes behind her, this is Joanne Clemenshaw of the Bruff Wheelers, on her way to a time of 24.55. Next, we see Reading CC's Alison Taylor, who was to be slightly faster, with 24.34. Now here comes Mum, Margaret Allen that is, twice BBAR winner and champion at this distance in 1990, Margaret these days is hard pushed to keep pace with Katie, partly because she spends considerable time guiding blind and partially sighted riders on tandems as they represent their country at the highest level. Here she was destined to clock a modest, for her, 23.49 for an eventual 22nd place. Another local now, Kent Valley's Sue Oxley, on her way to 19th place with 23.43 watched, apart from her many supporters, by the RTTC's assistant secretary, Trevor Bracegirdle. There he is in the foreground. Behind Sue came Real Road Club's Kerry Davis, but she was to be a minute slower, with 24.49. And now we know why they chose this particular lay-by for spectating as Easterly's Julia Freeman came hurtling past, looking easily the best by far. Even at this early stage, she'd already caught Tamworth's Amanda Stafford and was heading for a turn time of 10.50, which gave her the lead. The 1995 silver medalist at 50 miles was equally consistent on the way back, clocking a terrific championship record time of 21.28, a personal best by over a minute. But there was a long way to head before she'd know whether it was fast enough. Behind her, this is Crew Clarion's veteran Muriel Atterbury, on her way to a 25-28. 
And this is another of the Liverpool Century ladies, Amanda McDonough, ultimately the fastest of them all with 25-9. Next, another of the favourites, Maria Lawrence, now sporting the colours of Team Ambrosia. Third in the 1995 BAR, but still searching for her first title, she looked to be going well, and at the turn, which we'll see in a moment, she was just 23 seconds down on Julia Freeman. By the finish, though, that deficit had grown to 54 seconds, and her time of 22.22 was good enough only for fourth place. And this is the turn roundabout at Lindale, just a fraction beyond the halfway point. And this is where experience told over the beginner. This is Swaledale's Kim Staff on her way to a 22.54, catching 12 years old Kimberly Walsh of Huddersfield Road Club. The youngster clocked a remarkable 27.6 in her first ever 10. Behind them, the pool wheeler Melissa Kitcher had come a long way for her 24.35 and it's worth mentioning at this point that the weather was worsening just a little with a wind getting up that was going to make the return journey harder for the later starters. This is VC York Sharon Lowther who'd already shown signs of improvement in earlier season events and her 22.40, another personal best, gave her 7th place, her highest spot yet in a championship. Next came New Brighton's Jenny Kershaw, whose mother Joan won the 25 in 1965. Jenny claimed 15th place here with 23.12. Don't worry, that's just a spectator's bike, laying carefully down at the turn roundabout, as the next rider to be cheered through was another of the favourites, Swaledale's one-time junior BAR, Jill Reams. But her turn time was 11.31, 41 seconds slower than Julia Freeman, so she already had a huge task on her hands if she was to get back into contention. Here the effort's really showing, but an extra 25 seconds were lost on the return trip, and her 22.44 put her ultimately in ninth place, one position above teammate Kim Staff. Next came Huddersfield's Sharon Palmer, labouring just a little here on her way to a 24-25 and 28th place. Behind her was Twickenham flyer Jenny Durham, already passing her second opponent of the day. Jenny went on to clock 22-41 for 8th place, but it was only a portent of even greater things that were to come. This rider, Joyce Fleur from Wales, had been an earlier victim of Jenny's, although her 27.44 was by no means the slowest. Here's Claire Stott of Blackburn and District CTC, on her way to a turn time of 12.23, but with that headwind finish now becoming a problem, even spectators were wrapping up to keep out the chill. Coventry's Sharon Clifford is on the return journey here, destined to clock 27.8 and amongst the first riders to take longer to get back from the turn, despite the slightly shorter distance. Another Coventry rider now, but from a rival club, Pierangela Rossetti. She was the clear winner of the Coventry Stakes with 25.9. Spectators were disappointed not to see world and national record holder Yvonne McGregor at number 50. So the next seeded rider was former BBAR Elaine Ward. The Scarborough woman was a bit off the pace at the turn in 11.32 and took over 12 minutes for the return trip to clock 23.39. That 21.28 of Julia Freeman's was beginning to look like a formidable target. Now to the finish line, where amongst the many onlookers, that's the unmistakable figure of Gianni Berton of the Porto Eating House in nearby Bonus on Windermere, and the sponsor of the classic early season Porto Grand Prix. He stood and applauded many of the finishers, and such is his renowned generosity, he couldn't resist donating a bottle of champagne. 
for the winner. That's Liverpool Century's Jeanette Fawcett struggling over the line to clock 27.53, the slowest of their six riders. It was now clear to everyone at the finish that the earlier starters had had the better of the conditions. And that's Claire Stott, who we saw earlier. A 25.50 was not what she'd hoped for, whilst local girl Julia Mattison of the Kent Valley could only manage a 26.54. This is the 1995 100 champion Liz Milne finishing in 23.12, a time that was ultimately good enough for 15th place. But back to that return leg, and this is Swaledale's Sue Parrot. Quite fast at the turn, thanks now to the wind, in 11.44, she was now struggling and clocked a disappointing 24.32. Meanwhile, though, record holder at this distance, Maxine Johnson, had provided another surprise. Reaching the turn five seconds faster than Freeman, she'd lost a massive 40 seconds coming back to finish with 22-3. Freeman still led. On to another favourite, Marie Purvis, the 1992 champion. She was second fastest at the turn with 10.38. Only the defending champion and last one off, Scotswoman Sarah Phillips, was faster with 10.11. But even the North Wirral Velo ace was wilting in the wind, and a 12-minute return journey produced a time of 22.39, over a minute behind Freeman. It put her into an eventual sixth place. This is Blackburn's Helen Dawson, just five seconds slower than clubmate Susan Cheatham, but 14 seconds faster than their third counter, Claire Stott. But behind her, one of Arundel Velo's powerful squad, Zena Dighton. However, with a 23.49, she was slower than Fiona Harrison, Anne Wooldridge, and of course Maxine Johnson, who already appeared to have their first ever team title sewn up. Some consolation, I suppose, for Zena, following her decision to move to Arundel from the Leo Road Club. So, as Zena Dighton finished, there was really only the D-side Thistle rider Sarah Phillips who could beat the vastly improved Freeman. As we watched later riders crossing the line, the news was a sensation. Phillips had lost all her outward advantage and more to clock 21.31, just three seconds too slow. Julia Freeman was the new champion. The new queen was about to be crowned, with chairman of the North District Council, Jack Ruffley, doing the honours. It's my privilege and honour to have been invited to do the presentation this afternoon. But I think you will agree that it was very remiss of me not to mention the tragic happenings of a week ago. And I feel sure I speak on behalf of all of you when I say how shocked the cycling world was on receiving the distressing news that Beryl Burton had lost her life last weekend, doing what she has enjoyed doing for the rest of her life, for all her life, and that was riding her bicycle. Beryl lifted women's cycle racing at all disciplines onto a new level, and she set standards which today are still there as a challenge, which you're all very well aware of. <clears throat> the high standard, the determination and the ability demonstrated in today's National Women's 10 Mile event can quite really and honestly be directly attributed to the self-discipline that she displayed to others. Tragically, she was to have competed here today, but tragically that was not to be. Nor will she be celebrating with what should have been her 59th birthday tomorrow. I think it would be very appropriate on an occasion like this, where if you look at the championship list or an MP for the first four years, I think it will be appropriate for us today to just show our respect. I would therefore ask you to observe a minute's silence and reflect on her past.
To get on with the presentation, I will take the team winners first of all, which are in fact the three <coughs> members of the Urndal Velo, and they are third member of that team, Anne Woolridge, if you'd come forward when I mention your name, Anne Woolridge, who did a 23 10. just how close it was. Fiona Harrison, who was in second place in the team, was a second fast in 23.09. And leading the team was Maxine Johnson with a time of 22.03. Now the team aggregated 68 minutes and 22 seconds. Right, as they used to do in the third place, with a, a time of 22 minutes and 3 seconds, a member of the Oondle Velo, Maxine Johnson. Time of 21.31 from the D side thistle, Sarah Phillips. And it, uh, championship record of 21 minutes and 28 seconds, just beating the second place rider with three seconds. I think I previously mentioned just how close it was. The winner of the event today was Julie Freeman from the Easterly Road Club. a lot of effort and money into that, as indeed today presented yeah. a bottle of champagne for the winner now. Yeah, I think he's shy. He's, <laughs> I've never known him to be shy before, so I, I was going to ask him to come and present it himself, but there you are. There you are, the champion 10 mile ladies of 1996. 